This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection, and service. Hello everyone, I'm Dmitri with Hardware Canucks and welcome to another video. Um, back in June at E3, AMD has impressed us all with the launch of the R9 Fury X and the Fury cards, which were the first mass-produced GPUs to feature HBM or high bandwidth memory, and all relevant reviews are in the description below or in the eye here. But they also teased us with the R9 Nano, full details of which were unknown at the time, like how many stream processors it would have, what are the clocks like, uh, pricing and power consumption were all unknown. And AMD promised us an official launch in August, and we are in the end of the month now, and so we now know full specifications and all the details, but the full hard launch is not until September 10th. So this is the R9 Nano Explained, or a pre mini review. So the main reason why these cards are not yet available on this official launch is AMD tells us they're building the critical mass, which will allow the R9 Nano to launch on a broad scale. And it gives them a few weeks until September 10th to make sure there's adequate stock and availability of the of this card on launch. Now, the most surprising thing about the R9 Nano are the specs. So let's take a look at them now. Notice how little difference there is between the Fury X and the Nano as it comes with a fully enabled Fiji XT core. And this is not a cut down version like the R9 Fury. It's got the same amount of stream processors, ROPs, texture units. Uh, it's got four gigabytes of HBM at 500 megahertz, priced at 649 and has a TDP of 175 watts, 100 watts lower than the flagship. The real differentiator here are the clock speeds with the R9 Nano rated up to 1000 megahertz. What this means, score frequencies will be adjusted to fit the 175 watt TDP with expectations during gaming load for the engine clock to hover around 900 megahertz, roughly giving it the same performance of the Fury. And before we talk a bit more on the TDP aspect and how AMD is able to achieve that, and also where does it fit in with pricing, let's actually check out the card, shall we? So this is the R9 Nano. It is an incredibly compact GPU at just six inches or 15 centimeters. The full metal shroud has that familiar texture as is found on the Fury X with aluminum accents and the Radeon text on both sides of the card. The single 90 millimeter high static pressure fan is rated at 42 dBA or as AMD calls it, library quiet. And I hope this is a measure during load, but we'll have to check it out in our full review. So stay tuned for that and the target temperature of the r9 nano is 75 degrees celsius and we assume clock speeds would be determined by this target operating temperature and the way amd can achieve this pretty impressive cooling for this form factor is with this unique heatsink design there's a pure copper contact plate with a dual vapor chamber heat pipe layout and a secondary heatsink for the vrms the r9 nano is not made for overclockers and really uh, the main selling point here would be the form factor. And it's really unfortunate to not see a backplate here considering the card is $649, but we hope that the board partners will help to satisfy that expectation. There is a single 8-pin at the back for power, so when plugged in, the total length with the cable will still be less than the total width of a mini ITX motherboard, and that's pretty impressive. For the I.O., the Nano features triple display port 1.2 and a single HDMI 1.4, meaning for a 4K TV that does not support display port, you are limited to 30 hertz at 4K. Now, the two main questions you may be asking yourself is how can AMD achieve such a TDP of 175 watts, a full 100 watts uh, lower than the Fury X, which has pretty much identical specifications. Of course, lower clock speeds would determine uh, lower power consumption, but we expect there's high chance of cherry picking or core binning or core harvesting that's going on to find the most power efficient Fiji XT cores that uh, goes into creating the R9 Nano. 
And the second inevitable question is the price. Why would you spend as much on the R9 Nano versus a more powerful Fury X at the same price or find savings in getting the Fury, which is by our expectations would be uh, performing on the line or similar to the R9 Nano. And you guessed it, it all comes down to form factor. This is the most powerful Mini ITX GPU at the moment and there's no competition. We are seeing Mini ITX and compact form factors being adopted in the marketplace and there are gamers and system builders that prioritize on size and value the gaming machine based on the overall elements of the, the machine and not just raw performance. And this would be the perfect segue into getting our initial performance charts out of the way provided by AMD. And so here the Nano is put against the GTX 970 ITX version in which we are seeing about a 30% higher performance and this actually might mean the R9 Nano could be about 15% faster than the GTX 980 giving AMD a really strong foothold on the most powerful sub 7 inch GPU. And so the hard launch for the R9 Nano is September 10th. We are excited to explore the full potential of the power that the card holds and also explore the limitations that come with this uh, tiny form factor but also the complicated process that goes into finding you know bin chips on the Fiji XT cores that uh, that operate under 175 watt TDP. So make sure to subscribe to not miss our full review of the R9 Nano and let us know what you think of this card. I'm wondering to see how many of you would prioritize on size before performance especially at this price point. So leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.